I just turned 38 and in every year of my life, I always gain some nuggets of wisdom. So today I'm going to be sharing financial lessons I've learned over the past year. Hi, I'm Tasha Cochran with One Big Happy Life, and we help you find balance, build wealth, and live happy. Everything that you need to create the life that you want. Earlier this week, I shared lessons that I learned in life and in business. So if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. But today we're going to be talking about money lessons. Now, if you don't know, and I'm always surprised at how many people don't know this, I was a banking and finance attorney before I quit my job, quit being a lawyer to run One Big Happy Life full time. So basically it was my job to know personal finance and consumer finance inside and out and to help write the policies that would cover every single person in the United States. So when it comes to personal finance lessons, you know, it's often not, I often don't encounter just brand new things, right? Because personal finance tends not to change that much from year to year. It's just, oh, well, is there a new type of financial product out there? But what has happened over the past year? the coronavirus and quarantine, a global pandemic. And so I have learned a few personal lessons that I'm excited to share with you. And this whole thing has reinforced some general lessons that we've been teaching about personal finance this whole time. And so I really wanted to talk about those too, because it's just really timely right now. The first lesson that this past year has really hit home to me is the importance of knowing how to make money beyond traditional employment. When the coronavirus hit and so many people were quarantining either because it was required or uh, by choice, a lot of people lost their jobs. And so, so many people have no idea how to make more money beyond their traditional employment. And what that does is it exposes you to extra risk because it's really hard to learn how to go out and make money when you need to make money right now, when you're already in panic mode. So every single person, especially going forward, really should understand the different ways in which they can make money. Because so many, there's a huge economy of people, the gig, the gig economy is what it's called, who are able to go out and freelance or be a sole proprietor, a contractor, using their skills to work for another company. So I'll give you a quick example. So you know, my company is One Big Happy Life. We have contractors that we work with and we also have employees. And uh, in my last video, the business lessons I learned, I talked about how I hired too quickly and had to fire the person because of my mistake in not knowing the role that I was hiring, hiring for and making sure that the person had the skills that I needed. And so someone actually reached out to me on Instagram saying that she was an HR professional and that she would love to help me out in the future if I ever wanted to, when I was ready to hire again, she could help me hone the job description so that I could make sure that I'm hiring the right person and onboarding them in the right way. And so this is someone that works at a traditional brick and mortar company. And so she's found a way to use her skills and reach out to where she can use those skills in a different way. And every single person needs to know how to do that. So even if your skills currently rely on you being in person, I think that you can, you should look for ways to pivot your skills, look for ways that you can apply it in a digital way or acquire new skills that will allow you to continue to make money even if you're not able to go somewhere. So I think every single person should have that because even if there's not a pandemic, let's say you just want to move. Let's say you just don't want to live where you are anymore. And, but then you're stuck because, well, this is where my job is. So now I've got to wait and find a job in this specific area before I'm able to move. But if you know how to make money in other ways by freelancing, by being a contractor and specifically online, so where you're not, where you're location independent, then you can move wherever you want. So this just gives you so much more freedom in your life, so many more options, and it reduces your overall financial risk. The second lesson, which ties into the first lesson, is the importance of having 
multiple streams of income. So many people right now are worried about what they're going to do if they happen to be in the 30% of people that are downsized because of what they because of what's going on with the economy right now. Whereas if you have multiple streams of income coming into your house, and of course you make sure that your expenses aren't completely matching your income so you have some flexibility there, then that gives you that cushion. So multiple streams of income can look very different in different families. So sometimes just having two breadwinners is enough. So two people in two different industries, maybe only one of you gets laid off, but also having a side hustle, having uh, your own business, like being able to, like we talked about in number one, use the current skills that you have to generate some extra income and knowing how to do that so that you can weather whatever happens with the economy, right? Lesson number three, and this is a personal lesson that I learned, is the importance of having access to multiple types of credit at any given time. So Joseph and I do have multiple credit cards with high credit limits, and so we have access at any given point in time to over $100,000 worth of credit on credit cards should there be some sort of massive financial emergency, medical emergency, where we need to pay for something and you know, so we have access to those funds. Well, during the pandemic, I decided, hey, you know, I think it would be a good idea for us to go ahead and just get a home equity line of credit just in case. Not because I actually think we'll need it, but I love having just flexibility. I love having options because when you have options, you can choose the most optimal outcome for yourself. It's not other people that are deciding for you. You're not limited. You have choices. So I just loved the idea of, oh, well, why haven't I done this sooner? Just had a home equity line of credit just waiting for me just in case I wanted to do something with it. Well, by the time I went to do that, banks weren't accepting applications for new home equity lines of credit because they were concerned about the economy. And there was, you know, so many people were applying for those types of loans. So I really wish that we had just had one just sitting there because then I would just have it instead of it not even being able to access it now. So that's why it's so important that you maintain excellent credit and then you have those relationships, those, those credit relationships with a bank so that you keep are able to keep your options open no matter what happens. Lesson number four is that spending for a life that you want and then it not working out the way that you thought it would is never a waste of money. And generally, I want to say that spending your money, however you've spent it, it was never a waste of money. You made the best decision that you could at the time, given your knowledge at the time. It's only after the fact you spent the money, you got some feedback and you were like, you know what? Actually, I wouldn't do that same thing again. But I would really encourage you to not to ever tell yourself that something was a waste of money. Just see it as a learning experience and that you're ready to move forward and not make that choice again. So for us, we purchased the house that we did in this in for a particular school district so that Alexis could go to a great public school. And it turned out that that public school was actually not that great. Yeah, it was great from an, an academic perspective, but from a social perspective, it was not a good fit. We had a horrible encounter with a racist teacher, both who made racist comments to both Alexis and to me. And the administration, the principal was not super supportive. The principal basically said he was too busy to meet with me. Um, and so it was quite, it was really frustrating, really disappointing. And it also made us realize that we don't want to stay in this school district when uh, when Reeves is eligible for public school right now. He's in a private preschool. And so I think we have talked about this on the channel before, but people have made comments, a couple of people, not a lot about, oh, well, you know, you bought this big expensive house for the schools and then you ended up putting your daughter in college. So you, were, you didn't even use the schools sort of and really implying that the house was a waste of money. But the truth is, you know, this was the best decision that we could have made. We tried our best with the information that we had. And then as we were here, we learned, well, that's not working out quite the way we thought it would. And guess what? That is okay. There are going to be plenty of decisions, financial and life decisions that you make that don't end up shaking out the way that you thought they would. That doesn't mean that it was a waste. It was life experience. It was a learning experience. And at the end of the day, 
we've had some amazing memories in this house and this house has done so well for it, like helped us through the pandemic because we've, we're still self-isolating. And so, you know, I'm happy about the choices that we made. Yes, is it gonna cost us more? Yeah, because we're gonna move again. This is not our dream house and we always knew that, but that's okay. So just, that is a super valuable lesson. Just really, just owning your financial decisions, accepting them and not second guessing yourself. Lesson number five, if you wanna make money, you have to actively go out and seek that money. It's not just going to come to you magically. There are actions that you can take to make more money. And we share a lot of strategies, but at the in here on One Big Happy Life, but at the end of the day, it all starts with your mindset and knowing that it's okay for you to wanna make more money and that it is possible for you to make more money. And that third, if you want to make more money, you have to actually take action in order to make more money. So you've got to do all three of those things. And I know that a lot of you are in a position where your lifestyle and what you're able to accomplish with your current income, that's not where you want to be. And that is okay. It's okay to say, hey, that you know, I'm happy with my life. This is great. I'm in, I'm grateful for everything in my life, but I think that there's more that I wanna do. There's more that's possible for me. And so that means I need to grow my income. So I encourage you to really look at is what you're doing right now in your finances, are you hitting your financial goals? Are you hitting your minimum savings rate? Are you on track to retire when you want to? Do you like the way your life looks and feels? And if the answer is no, then start brainstorming ways that you can increase your income and adjust your life so that it aligns with the kind of life that you want to have. And lastly, the last lesson that I wanna share with you is that money can buy happiness. Now, I know that you've probably heard that uh, saying about happiness not increasing after $70,000 worth of income. Well, that study is completely misquoted. And in fact, multiple studies have shown that there is no cap to the additional happiness that you get the more money you make. So the more pe money people make, the more overall satisfied they are with their lives. And it is just true that the more money you have, the more you can do with that money, both in your life and in the lives of others. The more money you have, the more generous you can be with your donations, the more causes you can support, the more things that you can do in your own lives and making a difference in your children's lives and your grandkids' lives, the more that you can experience the world around you and the easier it, it, it will be for you to navigate upheavals like what's happening right now. I was reading an article today about people who lived in California in Silicon Valley, living in the city. And because when the pandemic happened, they were able to just pick up and move to a completely different place buy a completely different house like that because they had the financial resources to do that. And so when we tell ourselves that money can't buy happiness, what we're doing is limiting what is possible for us and settling in a place that we might not ultimately want to be. The more that we tell ourselves that money can't buy happiness, the more we're limiting ourselves and what's possible for us. The more that we're stopping ourselves from dreaming about what might be because we're telling ourselves, well, it doesn't matter what I do. I can't actually get any happier than this. And so that's, that's just not true. Now that's not to say that your life isn't amazing exactly where it is and ex at exactly how much money you make right now. But I just encourage you to not adopt beliefs that actually don't serve you and aren't even true in any way. Okay. All right. So those are the lessons that I have learned over the past year. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I'd love for you to tag me over on Instagram and share your favorite insight that you've picked up from this video. All right. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.